When you diet, things slow down. When people hit plateaus, fat loss slows down, and, and we knew that, that metabolism was adapting and hunger goes up, and, and there's all these things that are going on. And finally, in the 90s, uh, sort of the, the reason for all this came to the forefront with the, the discovery of leptin, and that was really a big, big puzzle piece for me. And, and basically, when you diet, which to your body is essentially starving to death slowly, uh, it creates all these adaptations. Um, basal metabolic rate goes down. Uh, the number of calories you burn during activity goes down. People tend to be less active, so they get less of what's called spontaneous physical activity. There's all these other changes to appetite. Hunger tends to go up. Hormones just go off the rails. And so it's, it's just your body trying to keep you from starving to death, which makes a lot of sense. And it all tends to be driven or controlled sort of centrally by this hormone called leptin, which comes from your fat cells, goes to your brain, tells you what's going on. So that's kind of the basic picture, and we knew that this happened. Now, at the extremes, what, what, what you're describing is sort of this idea that people that are still on low calories, still training hard, are getting zero fat loss, which would suggest that this adaptation, which can vary in size depending on the person, you know, is somehow completely eliminating that deficit, right? So suddenly they're not, because they're not, they're no longer creating an energy deficit. Now, in the early studies, um, which were mostly done on men, and I'll come back to this, you know, the, the, the absolute magnitude of that, that change was about 40%, right? So there's a potential drop from starting point of 40%. Now, about 25% of that is just due to a loss of body weight. Um, smaller bodies burn less calories, and there's really nothing you can do about it. But there's also this adaptive component, leptin, thyroid, nervous system activity, all change, and that's about 15%. But usually when they've seen this at the extremes, it's when people hit the limits of lower body fat. You know, they hit, it doesn't ever stop them from losing body fat. It, it, they get to 4% and that's it. It's this huge adaptation, but they still got there. So now there's this claim, like you said, that people who are supposedly still dieting and still on high cal or still on high amounts of activity, just nothing's happen, happening. And I think there's a few things going on. There do seem to be differences between men's and women's bodies. Um, the, the theory is that women's bodies adapt harder to dieting because, you know, they were more important for the survival of the human race. And, and certainly they, you know, and I, that is one issue. Most of the studies on this are done in, in men, and there could be a gender difference. Um, I have seen actually recently two case studies, which, and they were both in obese individuals, that their bodies showed such a quick adaptation that it canceled out the deficit. They actually, they dropped calories by 500, their metabolism went down by 500, boom, zero fat loss. But these were obese people and there's a lot going on there. What I tend to think is going on, and I've seen this a lot, is women, well, not just women, hard training, hard dieting dieters can retain a lot of water. And women already know this. Women can shift, you know, five, 10 pounds of water weight uh, across the menstrual cycle. And, you know, and if you've got a woman who's, you know, the deficit is predicting a pound of fat loss per week, if she's holding 10 pounds of water, you're not going to see anything happen for 10 weeks. And it will look like the diet is completely failing. So I think that's a big part of it. And there's also, there's a personality type that I will describe politely as being a little bit tightly wound. And they already tend to produce a lot of stress hormones. Like you, you can always tell who they are on the the internet forums because everything is in all caps and with a lot of exclamation points to the effect of not losing weight, what do I do? And like you can just see the tension in their typing and they are already overproducing cortisol. They are drawn to huge calorie deficits. They are drawn to hours of cardio and cortisol goes through the roof, water retention goes up enormously and very able to get these people to just chill out they will wake up five pounds lighter. Um, so I, I think that's a big part of it. I think another part of it is misreporting food. I'm not going to say underreporting, but let's just say that when you've got a, a small dieter who's on 1,200 calories a day, they it, number one, it's easy to screw up the deficit. When you're on low calories, it doesn't take much of a misestimate. You know, you you a little bit, you get into the peanut butter with your tablespoon and you overpack it just a little bit, and it's really, really, really easy to overcome that deficit. There's also a tendency in lean individuals to try to represent their diet as being better than it is. And I think you're not frequently hearing about 
um, the misestimated food, the uncounted food, the nighttime binges that are occurring that people don't want to talk about. Um, cause it, it seems like the people that are really addressing this metabolic damage issue as they're calling it, what you hear is that, ah, the female hard dieter who stalled went from eating supposedly 1200 unmeasured calories per day to 1250 measured calories per day. And somehow that magic 50 calories breaks the metabolic damage. And I, I would suspect that it's the measuring versus the non-measuring that tends to be the case. So I think, I think, I mean, yes, there is a metabolic adaptation. And I want to make a point. Because of the fact that this metabolic damage concept doesn't seem to have a lot of backing, I've seen people go to the other extreme. Ah, oh, there's no metabolic adaptation. We don't need to worry about it. Okay, that's not true. There is no doubt a super slowing of metabolic rate as you get leaner. Like that's, that is unarguable and the data on that is immense. It's just, it's whether or not it's ever large enough to completely offset a female on 1200 calories doing two hours of cardio. And I don't think that's the case. I think it's just water retention, a little bit of misreporting. Again, there's, I've seen two case studies in 50 years where the deficit truly prevented fat loss, and that was in people who were already clinically obese. So I think I, my, my gut, until I see something, and I'm supposedly there's some, some people who are going to be measuring this directly, and I look forward to that data. Until I see that, I'm going to suspect that it's just severe water retention, a little bit of misestimation of calories on top of the metabolic adaptation. You know, by the time a woman's only got a couple hundred calorie deficit, if she's overeating a little bit on her food and she's holding 10 pounds of water, you're just not going to see anything happen for 8 to 10 weeks. And my usual advice to these women is that they need to uh, get drunk or get stoned and get laid. Because that will seriously relax them and they'll make up lighter. 